Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video is going to be about the two frags that I got from my nano tank, uh, my nine gallon tank. I went ahead and I fragged uh, the frog span and the candy cane, as you must notice if you follow me way back on the nine gallon tank. The frog span was a mother of a colony, and so was the uh, candy cane, humongous. So I went ahead and I fragged that. And uh, I thought I'd show you on this video how they look, where I placed them. And also, uh, I noticed that on these swanties, there's little heads that are coming out. So I'm going to talk mainly about that and different things that's been going on on the tank. Oh, before I forget, the uh, Recordia also has two little mouths which means that it's getting ready to actually split. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let's take a deep dive. Okay, the first little frag from my nine gallon, um, this is the little one that I uh, show you now in the intro. This is just two heads, little frag of the candy cane. I went ahead, I, I have fragged it more than a month, but I waited for it to recover, make sure that everything was fine. It's glued to a plug. And I went ahead and I decided to place it in this area. Let me give you a close-up shot. It's doing fine. I keep checking on it and everything's fine when it comes to this coral. Okay, now still talking about the candy canes. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera. I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to show you something here. Okay, now this is what I've done. Uh, this is also a frag of the mother colony, the mother candy cane. Now, this is not the frag that you had seen previously that I placed on the other side of that rock. That one, I did have issues too. I already found out what the problem is, but I'll, I'll explain in detail a little further into the video. So this is another uh, frag that I had on the nine gallon that I had also fragged from the mother colony. So I went ahead and I placed it here and I'm observing now from here uh, from the candy cane. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take it to the frog span. I know you can see it all the way to the right, but let me focus straight into it. Here we are. Okay, this frog span frag, if you go to my nine gallon uh, aqua style and you look at my previous videos, this was a humongous mother colony that had grown and grown within a period of three years. It was humongous. It had a bunch of branches. So I went ahead and I gave a couple of the branches uh, to a fellow reefer, a friend, and then also I fragged a couple of them. This is a frag that has two little heads. I had glued it to a plug. I had it there on the nine gallon just, you know, to recuperate and observe it. Uh, everything's fine. And I also went ahead and dipped it and I placed it here on the 40 and uh, it's uh, doing great. It's expanding, expanding. It's growing and growing and its tentacles are extending. I don't think I'm going to keep it there, but this is just for now. And as I get more corals and I place them on the substrate, then I'll decide exactly where I'm going to place it, knowing that euphilias do great when they're together. Uh, they won't sting each other. If I decide to put uh, other corals, I have to make sure that I do give it enough space so it won't sting it. Okay, now I'm focusing on the zoos. I know you could barely see it, but when the lights start to ramp down and more blue kicks in, I can actually... I mean, you can actually see him better. I'm going to try with my finger more or less to see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, okay, right there you're going to see like a little dot and a, like two other, two a little dots. Okay, those are the uh, new polyps that are coming out on the zoos. So that'll start to uh, expand and expand. Uh, when it comes to zoos, you have to be patient. Well, in this hobby in general, patience really is what will bring you rewards when it comes to the tank as a whole. But I found out that when it comes to zoos, because I was asking questions, well, you know, I see these videos and I do my researches and all that, and man, you see all these colonies that they start to grow and grow and grow, but mine 
um, still like this one here I bought it at Worldwide Corals which is where I always shop and it was just four polyps and then the other ones on the other side is three well I started to ask around and do my own little personal research and I found out that zoos just give it time uh, give it time once they're really really acclimated they'll start and shoot uh, other heads and this is what uh, has occurred now this is a shot where I have on the background you see more or less the uh, candy cane then you have the stylopora you have the zoos on the bottom and then if I pan a little better this is a, a little better close-up shot then here we have the uh, frog frog span acans back there they keep growing and now I'm going to go ahead and show you what's been going on with the uh, recording okay now th this is a side shot if you look closely on the recordia you're going to see two little green fluorescent spot those are the actual mouths of the uh, recordia of course being a mushroom it has one little mouth but if you look closely you're going to see there's two one like let's say on the top and then a little lower down you're going to see another mouth that has developed and this is a full that shot of the tank how it looks as of today with the new uh, candy cane frag on the right hand side and then the addition of the frog span on the bottom of the substrate okay and that's it I hope you enjoyed the video but before I close the video I thought I explain uh, little tweaks that I'm doing to the system one thing that I definitely had to do and I did it yesterday after research and uh, talking to uh, Ecotech Marine I went ahead and when it came to the photo period on the Radeon I expanded it to 12 hours photo period uh, the uh, template that I use a lot of my followers ask me what templates and what's the photo period well the template is still the same is the, EP, the SPS AB plus but I had it like for a period of eight and a half hours I ramped that up to 12 hours and I did some adjustments I actually tweaked the uh, individual channels now that that'll be a video for a another day be in the lookout for that well I'll show you what I actually did and how you go about uh, actually uh, changing the individual channels but this is all due to the acros acros do need a lot of light and you know you, you actually can can uh, tweak that actual template and other templates but that's the one that I'm using presently and I went ahead and did that another news that I thought I uh, tell you uh, I've done you know I'm the king of researchers shall we call it but I did research and I found out because I've been uh, having a little issues on acros and I'm wondering why I do everything by the book and by knowledge from other fellow reefers gurus uh, in this hobby tanks that I see that are SPS dominated acro dominated and I did find out that SPS do need a certain amount of nitrates and phosphates so in other words you cannot have a clean clean shall we call it sterile tank if you have that what's going to happen is that the acros are actually going to starve uh, from consuming uh, phosphates and you have an issue with your acros they'll lose the coloration and you might actually uh, lose them uh, so that's an issue that I'm in the process of addressing there's a product that is on its way and that's to inject phosphates into the tank with conjunction of another product that I already have but that again will be another video where I'll go more into detail but yes acros not only do you have to have uh, a photo period adequate for them uh, put them on top you know as high as you can in reference to the species of the SPS in this case acros but also you cannot have shall we call it a sterile tank no nitrates no phosphates although this is a mixed tank but when it comes to acros they will suffer they do also not only giving reefroid zooplankton etc etc but they also do consume 
phosphates and allyl nitrates. So uh, if you have a sterile tank and you're starting to add acros and acros and acros and you're not able to see evidence of phosphates by a test kits, you are going to run into problems. But again, that's a video for another day and a video of what I did with the light and how I tweak the individual channels. So for now, I hope you enjoyed the video, the little uh, wraparound that I did on the tank, the explanation of the actual fracks that I got from the 9 gallon nano. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the thumbs up, the like button, and subscribe to my channel. And next to it, there's a little bell, hit that. That's the notification bell. So every time I upload a video, which of course, as you must be aware, all of you that follow me is weekly, usually like at the end of the week between Thursday and Fridays, you'll be the first ones to uh, note that Eddie's Reef Aquaria uploaded a video. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you very much for watching and have a great, fantastic day. Bye-bye.